Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Arn. And of course, we couldn't do it without the Hall of Famer, the founder of the Four Horsemen, the creator of the Spine Buster. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Arn Anderson. Arn, how are you, man? I tell you, last week was a pretty full show, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, man. God, it's got me, got me reminiscing and thinking and a lot going on. And God, what a special time in the business. It's uh it's such a great time to think about October and now November of 1985, because this is the month where, yeah, we're going to talk about all the matches. We're going to talk about all the towns, but something special happens in November. As the story goes, there was a local promo where all the guys are out there together. And I think you've said, you just said it sort of off the cuff. Tony Schiavone is there. And you said, uh, something like not since, well, you remember, how did it go? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, never in the history of the world have, has so much destruction been inflicted on so many by so few, the four horsemen, meaning the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Yeah. So it was a biblical reference kind of tweaked and catered to fit our situation. And, you know, biblical quotes are some of them. If you, when you, when you read them, they just slap you in the face and they go, God, that's powerful stuff. Well, I guess so. I mean, it's, it's coming from the book and that was just, it was, I didn't prepare for it. I don't know how, why it popped into my head. It just looking at, those guys that were surrounding me on that promo, it just kicked in and it just fit really did. And as the legend goes, that tape is not out there. It was a localized promo. And as a result, it was probably just taped over. So I don't think footage of it exists. Sort of explain to everybody what we mean when we say localized promo. Well, you're just talking about the town, your personalized, the town this Monday, we're going to be in Greenville and, and, uh, you know, we're going to stop here, uh, and, uh, at this gas station, you know, and, and get gas and <laughs> we're going to be in this arena by name. And we're going to go early that day and train. And then we're going to be back at the Marriott and you just personalize the town and it, and it gives the people that are watching the show at home, a sense that this is their television show. And uh, local promos really help to sell tickets locally, big time. So the idea would be <clears throat> that tape wouldn't have aired nationally. It wouldn't have been on WTBS. It would have been one of the syndicated shows uh, where they're saying, don't forget this Saturday night and such and such specific to that market. And that's where that not since the four horsemen of the apocalypse, have you seen blah, 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 whatever. 
uh, we are going to see you officially refer to this outfit as the four horsemen on November 9th. Uh, but before we get there, let's sort of set the stage, uh, November 2nd, we're doing a, a TV taping at the Omni. And of course you're all over it. Um, not at the Omni, forgive me, the WTBS studios. Like we always did the old six Oh five show. This is what aired that day, uh, from the six Oh five show, November 2nd, 1985. All right, David, we're back here at ringside. That was an interview recorded with the World Heavyweight Champion last week, and his cousins are here with us, only at Arn Anderson, the national tag team champions. Well, Tony Giovanni, that's a member of a family that anybody would be proud of, number one. And number two, just don't everybody get distressed because I wasn't mentioned in that little paraphrase. This kind of does my talking for itself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Secondly, it's been brought to our attention that Dusty Rhodes has got his cast off. Well, Dusty, you may be long on guts, but you're short on brains. It's a medical and physical impossibility for anybody to heal that quickly. Now then, Dusty Rhodes, if November the 3rd is actually the date that you're going to try to come back into action, you're goofier than I thought. Because it's physically and medically impossible, and if you roll in an arena where the Andersons are or Ric Flair, we'll just re-break that leg for you, Dusty Rhodes. This is mine, and recognize me as the world television champion. I'd have to agree with everything that's been said so far. I think that Dusty Rhodes is a guy that I've always looked at and said, you're a good wrestler, no question about it. You got a lot of guts. You got everything it takes. Only one thing short. You don't have this belt. You don't have these belts. And now it comes to everybody's attention that maybe you don't have too many brains either. I'll tell you this, Rhodes, and you can take it for gospel. You can write it down. You can bank on it. You can make book on it. It's too soon. It's too soon for anybody, even you, to come back in the ring. When you're hurt, you ought to take plenty of time. But it's just something that we're going to love to see you come back a little bit too early. Because when you do, we're going to make sure we do the job right. They all say it's too soon, but we're going to hear from Dusty Rhodes' doctor a little bit later on. Let's go to the ring. So we're, we've got hard times on, uh, on Dusty Rhodes, but we're not done. You're going to be back on this very same program, cutting a promo with Tony and Oli. Here we go. We also mentioned we had Crockett out here, and you talk about taking law and order in your own hands. Who in the world do you think you are, Crockett? You talk about people that are cheating, people that are backstabbing. I never saw anything like it in my life. You listen to what Bob Geigel says, and you discount it. I know a couple of lawyers. In fact, I know a whole bunch of lawyers. I'll make sure they get the seat, Dolly Blanchard, and get it straightened out. If you go back and you think about what the rules of the game are, you find out that Tully Blanchard had one commitment to wrestle Magnum PA. One more. The last one. Am I right? Am I lying? Am I telling a story? No. I'm telling it just like this. Everybody knows it. One more match. Now it's going to be another match, an I quit match. When Bob Geigel, president of NWA, says no, Jim Crockett comes out here. He's got some little goofy loophole, and he's going to put a guy back in it. Well, let me tell you this. You better watch out. Hey, we don't kid. We don't joke. We don't fool around. We've heard a lot of people. Magnum TA, there's a lot of time between now and that Starcade. I want about four weeks. You better have police around you every minute. You better be a child. You better be careful because if we get one chance, I mean one chance, even half a chance, Magnum TA, we're going to take you right out of this world. I want to know one thing and one thing only, Tony Schiavone. What is this I hear about Dusty Rhodes and a steel boot like a construction worker's boot? Now, I usually don't get upset, but if I get my arm hurt, can only Anderson tape a ball peen hammer to my arm and go out in the ring and wrestle with him? This is completely out of order. We have to go to the scoreboard and we'll be right back. <laughs> You're fired up, dude. That was great stuff. You know, the one thing that, that I heard in Oli's voice, which you never, you never heard, is a little bit of panic and, and anger. His voice went up. Yeah, it did. And that, by not hearing that, now, I hadn't even heard that. Now, what do you think the fans think? This is a different Oli Anderson. This angle is getting bigger than anything we've seen for him to actually, you know, be off his rocker over this and be screaming and hollering, which he never did. I think made it special. 
I get it. It's a wrestling podcast, but he's saving us money on our mortgage. Do you really trust this process? The reviews don't lie. Five-star review after five-star review. We make it fast. We make it easy and it's no cost or obligation. Give us a shot to earn your business. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did, especially if you like keeping more of your own money. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Hurry to save with Conrad.com. It was a, a fun time for sure, especially the whole evolution of the cast. And now we've got the boot. Um, you had a couple other syndicated appearances that same weekend. Uh, you and Oli would be in a squash and then do a promo afterwards. Uh, but then there's a, a promo with you and Tully that was on mid Atlantic. I want to play that one for everybody to hear. So we get a little bit of Tully action on today's program, November 2nd, 1985 with Bob Cottle. Here we go. Fans here at ringside. Of course, Tully Blanchard, perfect in baby doll, Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson. You've. That's Dusty Rhodes. That's Dusty Rhodes. Hello, Bob Carla. I'm going to give this to Baby Doll. I've been hearing speculation that I'm a thief. The bottom line is possession is 99% of the law, Dusty Rhodes. When I see you come out here laying flat on your back, dropping about the fact, crying that you're hurt, remember one thing, Dusty Rhodes. We're not playing tiddlywinks. We're not playing Chinese checkers. Every now when we go in that ring, we take the risk of energy. Now, if you don't have the guts to tape it up, put a little icy hot on it, wrap it up, and defend your title, then that makes me world champion. And I'm going to tell you something. The bottom line is, Dusty Rhodes, you're either a world champion or you're not. And as you can see, I am the world television champion. The U.S. champion, Tully Blanchard, only because you want to give Magnum T.A. the match. I'm going to tell you what, Bob Carlin, everybody out there, you saw a bit of a match, the last chance that Magnum had, and it was hard fought, 35 minutes. But you know, listening to Magnum T.A., you thought he was standing up here, and I was laying there knocked out. Well, as you saw, both men got carried out. Magnum TA, I still have the United States Heavyweight Championship. I don't care if you write a letter and send it up there. No, I quit, match. I don't care what the NWA says. Anybody, you know how powerful my lawyers are. Because you know, Magnum, the 30 days, you had your chance, your history. There's plenty of other people out there. Because I tell you what, Star K is going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I'm going to tell you what, the man that gets a shot at this at Starcade is going to be in the money. And Magnum, I understand you need some. What, your motorcycle's having a little problem? I'll send you some money to pay for it. How great was Tully? He was a heels heel boy. Yes, everybody, he everybody hated Tully. It's, uh, it's just classic stuff, man. And, and we're obviously about to reveal on national TV, not a localized promo that we've got a name that we are officially the horseman, uh, along the way, you do get a stop at the Omni, which included an in-ring announcement from Jim Crockett, Jr. That aired on November 3rd or not aired, but it would happened at the Omni on November 3rd. And remember now the Omni is what we would call, um, the scene of the crime, if you will, from the September beatdown. Late September is when they put hard times on Dusty. Jim Crockett Jr. steps into the ring and says that Dusty Rhodes has been cleared to return to the ring and he signed a contract to face the world champion Ric Flair at Starcade. I'm sure that got a big pop from the crowd. And that night, Manny Fernandez was supposed to team with Magnum TA and Billy Jack Haynes to take on the world champ Ric Flair and the national tag champs Ole and Arn Anderson. When what do you know? Manny wasn't available. So instead dusty Rhodes took his place. What was it like being back in the Omni on November 3rd, 1985, they make that announcement. Dusty's been cleared to return to the ring and he's in the main event and he's standing across from the guys who beat him down here just six weeks ago. Well, you can imagine, you can imagine the rumbling of that crowd. I mean, it was huge. Uh, the guy was back. He was right in front of you, ready to rock and roll. And, you know, the more angles that were shot in the Omni and the fact that we did television, you know, in Atlanta, it, it became 
you know, like a second home. It was like second to Charlotte, you know, it was in that, it was in that group of Greensboro and Charlotte and, and all those, those arenas that we considered for one reason or the other home field advantage and the Omni was, was certainly one of those. So it was fitting that a huge match like that took place in the Omni. I can only imagine the ovation knowing that the last time you were here, you had to fight your way to the back almost. And now he's cleared for action. And what do you know? He's the surprise after the match, R- dusty and, uh, and Rick face off before eventually flair leaves the ring. But you want to talk about building to a big show. Dusty knew how to build to a big show. Did he not? He's a very, very smart man. Yes, he did. And he knew how to, you know, take care of, you know, his character, but not only the people that he associated with that he gave a rub to, you know, to Magnum and, and, and whoever his partners were on that night were bigger stars for it and his opponents. And when he would talk about, you know, his opponents, it was the same rule that, that I always applied to all the baby faces, build them up, make them the biggest, most dangerous opponents that you possibly can talk about all of the positives and, and all the things that they bring to the table. It just makes the fight bigger. And when you get your ass kicked, it makes the person that's doing it that much bigger. And Dusty was really good about recapping all the things that we had done to him and, you know, how it was payback time. And he would remind the audience, you know, how he had been dicked around and, and man, today's payday. And it was, and you could, they could count on that. The next day you're in Greenville, South Carolina, November 4th, you're going to pick up a win over Ron Bass on the fifth. You're at the County exhibition center in Sumter, South Carolina. You're going on last with Magnum TA, uh, on the sixth, uh, you're, uh, in Dorton arena and Raleigh, North Carolina, once again, with Magnum TA going on last on the seventh, it's Magnum. Dusty and Manny taking on Rick, Ole, and Arn at the Norfolk Scope. Uh, on the eighth, you're in Richmond, Virginia at the Coliseum, a rematch, that same six man team. Uh, and then we're doing a, a television taping on November 8th in Columbus. And we're going to be playing some clips from some promos and whatnot. Uh, and then, of course, before you know it, we're back doing TV tapings in Shelby, North Carolina uh, on the 12th. It's a sellout for that worldwide taping. But let's go ahead and play a clip. Uh, of some, uh, some audio, uh, from, uh, November 9th here, this is going to be promos with Oli and Arn that aired on world championship wrestling. Something magic is going to happen here. That has been held up. The NWA has held up this title. Arn Anderson has the title in his hands. I know, but as dusty Rhodes' title, it's been held up by the board of governors of the NWA. It's and no there, one's I understand right now. there is going to be a tournament to decide who will be the world's television champion. I don't know why you got to have a tournament, David Crockett. You know, in England, they have what they call a little fox hunt. They got one little bitty fox. They got about 25 guys on great big horses, and they chase this little fox. That's what you call a stack deck. Well, in this case, I'm the fox, and it's because of you. It's because of Jim Crockett Promotions, Dusty Rhodes, and maybe even you, Tony Giovanni, that they're going to have a tournament. Now, I took this from Dusty Rhodes. It's mine, so why are you going to have a tournament for something that belongs to me? Maybe you can answer that, Rock. It sounds like collusion to me. It sounds like somebody's trying to do something to the Anderson brothers that we're not going to let happen. Not you, David Crockett, not you, Tony, not Jim Crockett, not Dusty Rose return. Not anybody's going to stop us. This belt belongs to the Andersons. It belongs to Arn Anderson. He's got it. You want to get it, Crockett? You want it, Dusty? Or 30 or 40 or how many people are going to be in that tournament? If you want it, you're going to have to come and take it from Arn Anderson. And I'll be right there making sure you don't get it. Well, that's only in Arn Anderson. The fact is, because of the injury, Dusty no- Rhodes was not able to defend that title within 30 days, like that's in the great. bylaws, and that's why it has been upheld. Let's go back to the ring. So you do have a match, but then after the match, uh, it is a tag match. You're going to come back, and this is where some wrestling history is made. Uh, I want to remind everybody, you have already referred to your outfit as uh, uh, the Four Horsemen. Uh, but it was a localized promo. It wasn't something that was seen by everyone. And as the story goes, 
Tony Schiavone looked at you after you did that localized promo and said, I think you just named yourself. Do you remember that being the case that Tony's the one who realized, Hey, wait a minute. That's the name of this group. Yeah, I really do. Because it was, it was a moment in time. Tony looked like he'd seen a ghost when the promo ended and he walked over and he went, I think this is the quote. He went, geez, Arn, you just named you guys. You know, I was looking at the monitor and, and, and God, that fits you, you know, that that's great. You know, and, uh, we're, would you just come up with that? And I said, yeah, I guess, I guess I did. And, you know, after that aired in the arenas, I started sticking up the four and, you know, only, you know, noticed it and he noticed the fans were giving it back. And so the next night, you know, he was, he was pitching in and he was throwing up the four and the thing just literally evolved. It just flamed up, took off. And, uh, there wasn't a discussion really amongst us about it. It was just, Hey man, that, you know, that seems to be working. And it, and it really did. It just kind of came, I guess you would just have to say it was fate. Let's listen to some of that fate spill out of your mouth again, November 9th here on world championship wrestling, the six Oh five show on TBS. Here we go. We saw a man, Billy Jack Haynes out here. Not too long ago. Said some threatening words to you and Ole Anderson, Arn Anderson about taking those national tag team titles away from you guys during star Kid. Well, Tony Giovanni, every time I walk in Gold's gym, I have six or eight muscle heads threatening me. So it's nothing new. The main thing is what you've got right here in the ring you've got a champion you've got tully blanchard you've got ole anderson you've got myself and last but by no means least you've got rick flair the world's heavyweight champion you're talking about the four horsemen of professional wrestling the people that make things happen and coming up you've got the gathering which is the biggest event ever wrestling wise on the face of this earth now, Dusty Rhodes, just because they gave you a stacked deck and let you wear that loaded boot, don't think by any means that the match, and I mean the match, with our cousin Ric Flair is going to be anything except the same result. They're going to touch you out on a slab, maybe with two broke legs, because if you think we're going to stray very far, you're sadly mistaken. Tell them about it, Rock. Well, I'll tell you what, there's several belts up for grabs. National titles are up. We've got Wahoo McDaniel and Billy Jack. We'll take care of that when the time comes, the gathering, the time when everybody gets together. But there's one match in particular that we're going to be watching very, very closely, and it's the one involving our cousin. If we're going to break your leg for free, Dusty Rhodes, if we're going to jump Magnum TA just for the fun of it, if we're going to break Sam Houston's arm just because we like to hear bones crack, you think for two seconds at that gathering we're going to stand by and watch you and Ric Flair, nothing happening, you better get a think again. That belt up, the biggest belt in the world up for grabs. There's going to be some Andersons and maybe some friends that are going to be standing around. You talked about bringing everybody together. Well, we're going to bring the whole Anderson clan together if we got a truck Minnesota down here. We're going to have enough people at that gathering that every time you move, you're going to be looking this way and that way, wondering what's going to happen, what's going to happen. And while you're worried about us, Flair is going to take you apart Keep that world belt, but more importantly, we're going to cripple you once and for all and get you out of professional yeah, wrestling. Yeah. And that's a promise, road. Let's don't forget what our good friend Tully Blanchard is going to do to Magnum. Tully, show him what class is all about right there, baby. Cut up a little bit. Let's go to the ring. Four Horsemen. That's said for the first time on TV here, November 9th, 1985. Golly, on the one hand, it doesn't feel like it was all that long ago. But on the other hand, it feels like another lifetime ago. What about from your perspective? God, yeah. And it, you know, it, it stuck. And I knew, you know, then there was going through my mind, what other, you know, four horsemen. And then you, you know, you, you look at the football players, the four horsemen, and you look at the four horsemen of the apocalypse where it was pulled from. And now we've used it in a different context totally, but it's starting to stick and starting to feel right. It's starting to jail and only co covered a ton of ground on that promo, you know? And the thing about it is also on different promos where we're talking about that, that steel boot being a weapon, you know, it was there to protect his ankle, which made perfect sense. 
But if you've ever been kicked with a steel-toed boot, you also know the ramifications of that. It might have been protection, but it was a weapon as well, which just put more jeopardy on all of us. And, and man, I got kicked in the head with that thing a few times, and that's the last thing I remember till the end of the night. So, you know, there was a lot of things brewing. The angle had a lot of layers, and it was really, you could just feel business was just percolating. Along the way, you guys do that TV taping at the Shelby Rec Center, November 12th. That's a sellout. This is where we do have some interaction with, uh, with you and Dusty. We'll play that in a, in a moment. On the 14th, uh, we're in Columbia, South Carolina, and you're working on top. Again, it's that six-man match. But this time, instead of Flair, it's Tully. Uh, so it's still Magnum and Dusty on the on one side. This time, they're teaming with Billy Jack Haynes. It's you, Ole, and Tully here as a six-man did you have a preference when it came to the six man, Rick, uh, and, and only, or Tully and only? No, God, I loved all of it. You know, it was any combination. It was not lost on me who I was in the ring with, you know, those guys were mega stars already credible talents. You know, they were top of their game and I was just like a sponge. I was the, I was the young guy, even though I didn't look at obviously, but I was the young guy and I was just soaking it all in. And uh, Billy Jack Haynes, man, he was a very impressive guy at that point in time in his career. And that was a nice rub, him being in that match. So a lot of good things going on. You're also going to be uh, doing a TV taping here um, in uh, November, f- November 15th, 1985, where we've got Flair, Ole, and Arn getting a win over Ron. Uh, Garvin, Terry Taylor, and Pez Watley. Arn's going to Pez, uh, Pez. He's going to pin Pez. <laughs> easy for me to say. Arn pin Pez. That's like a tongue twister. Um, I want to talk about something that happened on the 18th because you and I've never spoke about this, but you guys do sort of a rare thing. You wander down to another territory, Memphis, Tennessee, the Mid South Coliseum, November 18th, 1985, and it feels as if we've got a little bit of everything here. We've got a lot of local talent uh, on the show and we've got some, some young cats like Tom Pritchard. But when I say local talent, I mean like Tojo Yamamoto and Dutch Bantel, but then check this out. Jerry Lawler is going to team with dusty Rhodes and Magnum TA to take on Tully Blanchard who has baby doll by his side, Ole and Arn. And then we've got Ivan and Nikita taking on the rock and rolls in a steel cage match. And then in the main event, it's Ric Flair versus Coco Beware, who was substituting for Bill Dundee, who was obviously a megastar in Memphis. But tell me about this pretty rare six-man opportunity in the Mid-South Coliseum where you're standing across the ring from Jerry Lawler. First time meeting Jerry. Uh, I had certainly knew all the stories, and there was no internet back then. There was, you know. Magazines. Yeah, magazines you know, that's, that's how you kept up with everything and the word of mouth and, and all that. But we knew what a huge star he was. Uh, I'm sure without even asking that that Memphis Coliseum was sold out. And in those days you had occasional talent swaps and that's what that would have been. Uh, I remember going over and, uh, you know, no hearing about the Memphis, you know, uh, city itself and how hot it was and what a great wrestling town it was, you know, but I'd never been there never worked there, the territory. So it was new to me and it was, it was exciting. And the fans were fantastic. They were all over it. And it was a wild bunkhouse match that, you know, in Tennessee, they were accustomed. They knew what it was and, uh, it just had some new stars and, and, uh, certainly beefed up that, uh, that card by having the Crockett talent come over. And it was just, it was one of those, you know, really, really exciting nights. And, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's really fun to think about you and Lawler. I think the only time you guys ever worked was the day before at the Rupp arena in Lexington, Kentucky. It's a six man, much like it is here for the big town Memphis at the mid South Coliseum. That was the only two times you were ever in the ring with Lawler, right? Yep. But you got a sense, you know, we got together, uh, just limited, but you could just tell what a pro he was and 
how good he was in the ring. And the reason Jerry Lawler became the star that he did and pretty much, you know, worldwide is because he was a very talented guy. Forget about how great he was on the microphone and what a great character he was and, and all that. The guy was a tremendous performer and, uh, you know, I got to experience that and it was an honor and a privilege. Pretty cool to see, you know, I don't think a lot of folks would have known that even happened. I didn't, I just discovered it in my research here. Uh, let's take a listen to some promos though, that aired the weekend prior November 16th. This was on worldwide. Uh, you and Oli are going to do a squash match, but I'm more interested in what you have to say. Let's take a listen here. Gentlemen, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, the National Tag Team Champions, Oli and Iron Anderson. Mr. Anderson, this championship belt will be given away to the winner of a tournament. Isn't that correct? David Crock, you stole that. David Crock, it's your out of your mind. You don't have a tournament for something that belongs to me. It Why have a tournament? This is mine. It belongs to Ole Anderson. It belongs to Arn Anderson. It belongs to the whole family. You just witnessed Kelly Blanchard destroy a man he even don't have on the Anderson colors. So maybe he's got a little Anderson in him. You take him, Ric Flair, Ole, and myself. What crossbreeding did it take to get this much talent in one family? I can't imagine. But if you think... Anybody, and I mean anybody, is going to disrupt our family business, including Jim Crockett Promotions. You're nuts. Something else. I've been hot under the collar because of what's going to happen or what they're trying to perpetrate on us. You take a look at that Dusty Rhodes. You know darn well that that thing in his doggone boot is illegal. And don't tell me he don't have anything in his boot. Don't tell me that he's just got his foot in there because you know, and certainly I know because I got wrapped upside the head by it. I know Dusty Rhodes. He's got a chunk of steel or some darn thing in his foot. And I'll tell you what. He ought to be searched. He ought to be thrown out of wrestling. He ought to be burnt. Ole. He put it right there. And you keep your mouth shut. He's walking around with an illegal weapon in that foot. He almost knocked his brains out. Rhodes, that boot should be banned. You're trying to hurt somebody, and I know who it is. And my friend, you're jumping on the three wrong guys. Because I guarantee you, if you walk that aisle against us, we're going to take that boot and both legs this time. Woo! David Crockett, there's an old saying. You don't jump a dog in his own backyard, and you don't mess with family. And we are the family. We're going to be watching, Rhodes, every move you make. Great stuff, man. Mm. I don't know why I love those old promos, but I could just listen to old horseman promos all day long. I mean, I think once upon a time when tape trading was a thing, guys actually did that. They just made compilations, y'all's promos and just traded them around. Well, you know, you had a lot of articulate guys that uh, were really tuned in to the, to the business and, and loved the business and, you know, were intelligent guys. And then when you sort through the volume and the sometimes elevated screaming and hollering and all that, and you sort through and you go back and you listen a second time, what story are we telling? You know, everybody there that was on that promo acknowledged the danger involved in Dusty's boot. That made it huge. If we're concerned about it, then the audience should be concerned about it. And when you left that promo, it's like, man, these three guys know that, that they're at a disadvantage and, you know, something's going to happen here. And to acknowledge that you're afraid of, of a steel toed boot or something, it just makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't you? Let's, uh, let's take a listen to world championship wrestling. This is the six Oh five TBS show from the same day, November 16th, 1985. We get a uh, six man tag match, uh, with the family and then a promo afterwards. When I say the family, of course, I mean, Rick, Ole and Arn, uh, but no surprise, Rick, Ole and Arn are going to come out victorious. And then they've got a few things to say. Let's take a listen. And Ric Flair. Back on World Championship Wrestling. And here are the Minnesota Wrecking Crew members, Ole and Arn Anderson, the World Heavyweight Champion, Nature Boy Ric Flair. 
and everybody talks about how bad the Andersons are, and I know Dusty Rhodes. I know how just anxious you are to get a hold of Ric Flair. You want that world heavyweight title. You also want that world TV title. And I know you and the Road Warriors have got something cooking, otherwise they wouldn't be down here. Flair's exactly right. There's no place for people like you, the Road Warriors, or anybody else. We're the ones that are going to run this joint, whether you like it or you don't like it. And if you don't like it, then you better come and take up the issue with us. Don't stand out here with that 50-cent jacket you got on, looking like a hayseed farmer, and tell everybody how tough you are. The time to show it is when you get in the ring. And the belts on us show that we're the best there is in professional wrestling. Tony Giovanni, how much cross-pollination do you think it took to get a family like this all together? Just answer me that. And Dusty Rhodes, don't do like all these guys out here. Don't stand back across the parking lot and say, you got something belongs to me. Step up for one time in your life and be a man and just come take it, okay? You know, when you stand in a showroom... And you're sitting in a showroom that's full of Mercedes Benz and Rolls Royce. You look real good if you're an automobile. If you're a man and you're a wrestler, you look the best of them all if you're standing with the Anderson and Ric Flair. Can you see? A lot of guys walk around this great sport telling everybody what they're going to do. You're looking at three guys that have in their hands proof of what the pudding is, Daddy, and that's one of the best. And don't try to cut me off. Dusty Rhodes, you call me yellow, I'll mop the floor up with you when I get you at Starcade. Woo! Now let's bring in once again the man, the world heavyweight champion, that's your boy Ric Flair. You know, as great as I am, it's a little hard. When there aren't too many telephone booths around for myself to get ready to come out here woo, and style and profile yeah, baby. for the world today. You see, this is the world heavyweight champion. Just like this one moment, the greatest athlete alive, just like this the second moment, a refined business executive. And you know what? When you're the world champion, you always, yeah. Hang out with the elite people in the greatest sport in the world. I'm talking about professional wrestling. You look at the great Tony Blanchard, the United States heavyweight champion, right here. There they are. My own family, the national tag team champions, only in our Anderson and the new world. And I mean world's yeah. television champion, the great Arn Anderson. And Tony, you got to know that, brother, you're standing right here in some tall cotton, if you know what I mean. Right, Ole? Some of the best in the world. Right? Not some of the best. You're talking about the best. Everybody else looks at the Andersons. They look at Flair. They look at Blanchard. And when they try to figure out a game plan or when they want to figure out how they want to be the rest of their life, that's the people that they look at. We're the people that they look at. We've got more pictures in wrestling rooms, locker rooms, than any place else or anybody else in the whole world. That's because we're the best. We've got the belts to prove it. We've always done a lot of talking. We've always done a lot of bragging. But like we said years ago, I guess, it's difficult to be modest when you're so great. And we are great. We oh, are the Lord, best. how it's hard to be humble. Woo. Oh, you know, you're looking, at, you're looking at the real pause attraction guys right here. I mean, girls, is there anything like it? I know all you women out there in Columbus know how refined Ole Anderson can be, huh? You remember how he used to terrorize? Here, there is Dusty Rhodes, Magnum T.A. They were crying, Tom. You better have to wait. Oh, they're calling Flair. They're calling Ric Flair. It's easy for him to talk.
man, what a way to end the show, dude. Mm. So just to sort of set the scene, if you're not able to find any of this stuff on YouTube, you've got the four horsemen out there talking trash and all of a sudden dusty and Magnum appear in the ring. And it looks like it's going to be four on two as unbelievably dusty and Magnum are saying, yeah, we're not scared. Come on with it. And all of a sudden, as you guys start to pull yourselves up into that ring, here come the road warriors, evening the odds four and four and the crowd, as Pat Patterson would say, went banana. (laughs) And it might be your observation that they even the odds, I'm going to say that the odds went about threefold in their favor. (laughs) My God, that was, you know, one of the first times, you know, Uh, if not the first time having that association of the road warriors with dusty and magnum right yeah i would i would think so and and what a what a pop it was i mean a major moment in wrestling but it's getting to you know the horsemen are at full strength dusty is back and you could argue he's got a competitive advantage because he's got the loaded boot but you've taken his tv title so now he wants to take flair's world title it's great stuff, man. Good storytelling. And it, but, you know, it ties everybody together, and the Road Warriors were an unknown quantity at that point. But the visual of those guys was just, wow, just too much. And uh, now you saw, you could just see the audience starting to count. It was what was four on two is now at least four on four with those guys, and maybe then some. And you could just tell that payback was coming. It is coming. And we're going to play a clip of that. But before we do, uh, I want to do another clip from worldwide. This is November 23rd. Uh, just to set the stage here, uh, November 19th, you guys were in Greenwood, South Carolina doing a TV taping. And we're going to play a clip of that in just a moment. Uh, you're also going to be in Dorton arena on November 20th. Uh, you're in Charleston, West Virginia. You're going on last It's the 22nd here. It's dusty and Magnum taking on Rick and yourself. Uh, and then of course we're home stretching it to Starcade when we're in Philadelphia, it's a sellout November 23rd, 12,500 fans. It's dusty and the road warriors on one side, taking on Rick, Ollie and Arn on the other. What do you remember about that? You're back in Philly. It's sold out. And, uh, of course we've seen a a pretty special moment in wrestling in more recent weeks, but that road warrior pop was a real thing. What was it like here in November of 85? This was a six man. Yes, sir. I'll never forget it. People ask me all the time. What is the the strongest reaction or the, the biggest reaction that you ever remember in a, you know, for a show and anywhere. No comparison. Uh, they get the Road Warriors painted Dusty up. Road Warrior paint. We were in the ring. And uh, when that Road Warrior music hit in Philadelphia, who, that was a bloodthirsty bunch, buddy. And that door flew open and Dusty and the Road Warriors started down that aisle. I never heard anything like it. It was unbelievable the chill bumps that i got watching my death you know my own death (laughs) was coming down coming down the aisle it's like i should have had a different reaction for that i should have just ran right away that's tremendous But, but standing in that ring watching those guys come down the aisle and it would it was only myself and tully right on that Uh, side it was Rick, Ole, and Arn. Rick, Ole, and Arn, yeah. So as they got almost there, he, he looked at me and goes, what do you want to do? And I said, I'm getting the hell out of here. I don't know yeah. about you. And we bailed, and we gave him the ring, and that place went ballistic. And what proceeded to happen probably over the next 20 minutes is the three of us took at least two full rounds of ass whippings by every one of those guys and the audience never sat down. They never stopped screaming. We never, I don't think we ever slowed them down that night, which was the thing to do. And they just dominated. They kicked our ass. That's what that audience paid to see. And that's what they got. We got routed for lack of a better word. 
I think the match you're thinking of, uh, when you said Tully was the next night, cause you did a six man on top again, the next night. Uh, but Rick had to go wrestle somewhere else that night. So okay. you're, in, you're in Baltimore. It's dusty and the road warriors on the 24th of November, Ole, Arn and Tully. Uh, it is a, a bunkhouse match. Rhodes is going to pin Ole in eight minutes and 14 seconds. But I, I assume the reaction in Baltimore was, uh, pretty strong as well. Yeah, I wouldn't say no disrespect to Baltimore. They know how I feel about those fans there. They're, you know, always great, but nothing could touch the night before, but it was pretty damn good. Baltimore's a great wrestling city. Uh, I just want to add some context to this. The night before Starcade, which was November 28th, 1985. And as everybody remembers, it's a Thanksgiving tradition, if you will. You guys were in Miami at the convention and hall, a convention hall for championship wrestling from Florida. It's dusty Magnum and Wahoo taking on flair, Ole and Arn. Uh, what do you remember about this show? Uh, you've got 5,792 fans. You're back in Miami. It's the night before Thanksgiving and the very next day, boy, it's one of the biggest shows of the year. Certainly of your career, Starcade 85, but you're on the road in Miami in the main event against Magnum, Wahoo, and Dusty. Well, growing up in Rome and living pretty much my entire life in the South, I am uh, used to it being cold wherever yep. I am for Thanksgiving. Yep. Much like yourself, I would imagine. Yes, sir. And it was probably 95 degrees in Miami, which felt a little funky. Yeah but it was another great wrestling city that had a huge main event. And, uh, you know, I wasn't just like many territories. I never worked that territory. I just made shots for like Jim Crockett in and out and stuff like that. So it was a rare occurrence to get to wrestle in Miami. And, uh, in those days when you would be in a brand new venue with, with a group of guys, even though those guys might've worked there in the past, when you had that match in that town, it was just big because they were great wrestling, wrestling fans. Uh, I would think the first thing, the next, next morning, we had to jump up, jump on a plane. Now we're heading towards the big one, star, starcade. And, uh, it would have been easy for some guys to look past that Miami match because you know uh how big the next night was but yeah every single night conrad the fans were so great and business like i said was continuing to snowball and it was just getting bigger and jim crockett promotions was getting bigger every night was a blessing and every night was a privilege to get to perform in front of those fans so you know it was just another great city and another great match and uh we loved it let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket, but we will save you money. It's not a matter if it's a matter of how much save with Conrad.com. We're going to talk about Starcade next week, but before we get there, we need to add some context. We're going to play uh, a couple of promos here, but then we've got boy, something big that happens that you don't want to miss. Uh, first though, here's a uh, Arn and Ole. Uh, they're going to do a six man tag, but beforehand, they've got some words for us on worldwide. This is from November 23rd. Team Huddle, let's bring in the champions. Only in our Nanders in the vetting at US Heavyweight Champions, Billy Jack Haynes and Chief Wahoo McDaniel. The largest single sporting event in history. Tony Giovanni, Billy Jack, you're in bed with the big dogs now. If you think you've got Wahoo McDaniels as a suitable partner, if you think that's the combination to take out the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, you're sadly mistaken because in front of one jillion people, me, myself, and Ole Anderson are not going to disgrace ourselves by letting you do anything resembling a victory. Nobody takes the belts away. We've already had one instance where somebody snuck up and tried to steal something. I'll tell you this, Billy Jack, Wahoo McDaniel, you got your work cut out for you. Dusty Rhodes, you'd better look out too, because we're going to be watching that match with you and Flair, and ain't nobody going to take any belts from Andersons or Flair on Turkey Day. And let's hear right now from the heavyweight champion of the world. So from there, you guys have the uh, the six man tag, but we're still trying to promote all we can Starcade. But of course, on the way, 
something big happens. Uh, Dusty's got a message for Arn Anderson. Let's take a listen. The title against Magnum TA. And speaking about champions and championships, here's a man with a championship belt. The World Television Championship belt really doesn't belong to him, Arn Anderson. Well, Bob Cottle, I'm tired of hearing that. This is my belt. Jim Crocker Promotions is supposedly putting on some kind of tournament for something that is mine. Is that correct? A tournament? That's right. A tournament I, it will, will Bob Cottle, I earned this. I've worked all my life to earn it. You, Jim Crockett, F. Lee Bailey, I don't care who. Nobody's going to take what belongs to me. You understand? This is mine. It's collusion out of Jim Crockett promotions to come get what I've earned. I earned this. Everybody out there knows it, and nobody's going to do anything about it. Dusty Rhodes from behind. Tomber, Arn Anderson with a cheer. Arn right down on the floor, and Dusty Rhodes just reaches down and picks up that belt and calmly walks away. As from behind, he turned the lights out on Arn Anderson with that chair right here while we were talking with Arn. Arn still down on the floor now, rolling around, holding the back of his head. Still out of here comes. Oh, what do you think? What do you remember about that moment where Dusty attacked you from behind? Damn it. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I thought, yeah. my God, who would do that? It's a great question. Come up and waffle somebody from behind and take something that was not theirs. Some might say it's poetic justice. You know, to them, I say, you know, that was like a thief in the night. You know, this guy came in and just, I had already, you know, become accustomed to and got comfortable with and had a lot of pride in being the world television champion. And to have it just taken away from me like that, God almighty, I just felt naked from then on. And, uh, Oh, bullshit. I had it coming. What the hell? It was great TV. Dusty got his, got his comeuppance and it was, it was awesome. It had been building. How long have we built that? A couple of months. Yeah. From when I took it away from it, it was awesome, man. It was, you know, you just felt it that once my ears quit ringing from the chair shot, uh, you know, and I'm listening to the fans and it was like, yeah, you son of a bitch. You had that comment. Da, 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 da. And you know, when you pay it off and they're all over the baby face doing something back to you as a receipt, we call it in the business, then you know that it worked and it really did. It worked. Well, next week, we're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to talk about Starcade, which was of course, uh, at the end of November, and then we'll cover the rest of 1985 as we march through December of 1985, but man, there's so much that's happened in just these 60 days leading up to this. You guys left, um, Magnum TA laying in a locker room and then you left Sam Houston laying in a parking lot and who could forget you locked the cage in the Omni and you put hard times on dusty roads. And now you've named yourself the four horsemen. This is all happening. Bam, 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 right here in the fall of 1985. And now next week. It's the big one, the gathering Starcade 85. It's a sellout, of course, uh, wherever you went, whether it was Greensboro or Atlanta, of course, the Omni was sold out as well. Uh, and you're that night going to be defending, uh, with, uh, your old pal, Ole Anderson, the national tag team championship against the United States tag team champions, chief Wahoo McDaniel and Billy Jack Haynes. A lot of moving parts here. It's not just a regular super show. It's a super show in two separate locations. That's what we'll talk about next week here on the show. I don't know what I expected when we started going in chronological order for your career, dude, but this is a lot of fun. And I appreciate you taking us on the ride together with everybody. Well, I love, you know, our listeners and, uh, you know, they, they had told us what they wanted and we listened and, I appreciate the patience of, of, I know it's a little slow, slower moving. Appreciate the patience of the audience that like a faster pace, maybe show, but let me tell you guys, I know that I appreciate being able to go back and, and tell you the story because there's so many cool things that happen that nobody has ever heard about. Uh, I appreciate you guys supporting us and, you know, the, the critics have all spoken and, and they're enjoying the format. And uh, I'm glad of that. That's why we're here. You know, we're having a great time, Conrad. I appreciate you and, and digging up these stories and reminding me. And 
man, it's just been a blast. I'm enjoying myself and, uh, I know you are, and I hope our audience is. I want to give a shout out to the third man of our crew here, Mr. Richard land. Uh, he's the editor for the history of WWE.com. So when I'm bringing up all these towns and results and attendances, that's all found at the history of WWE.com. And Mr. Land actually goes out and sources all these different clips for us. So we can bring you these promos. And I think at hearing the audio from the time really adds a lot of context to the show. Arn, wouldn't you agree? Oh yeah. I mean, rabid fans, one of the coolest things when you're shooting the, the TBS show and you're, you're hearing, you, you know, an angle goes down and you can hear individual voices, you know, when, uh, from the fans, Yeah, which I think is pretty cool. Then at a packed arena, you don't get to hear and you get to hear those individual voices and, and screaming and a hundred people sounds like a thousand, you know, it's just really cool. We're having a great time. Hope you guys are digging what we're doing. Don't forget you get all these shows early and ad free over at adfreeshows.com, including some incredible interactive opportunities that you don't want to miss with Arn. You get to ask Arn your question, watch old wrestling with him. It's a great time. It's adfreeshows.com. I also want to mention you can get all your Arn gear, all kinds of swag over at boxagimmicks.com. And don't forget, in case you haven't already, throw us a follow over on Twitter. Uh, we're going to start taking some more questions as we wind down 1985 over at the Arn show on Twitter. If you'd like to advertise your product or service on the program, that's easy too. just go to advertise with Conrad.com. I am at, Hey, Hey, it's Conrad. And we are out of time. We'll see you next week right here on Arn. Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.